Equation, so many goddamn equations. Hmm. Why do I to memorize like 500 equations just to learn kinematics? Physics is so evil. So many equations, it's crazy. Hello everybody, I'm Karara and today we're going to be talking about a really epic trick in physics that is going to help you memorize all your equations, going to make it a lot easier to get your solutions faster, and just in general is a super helpful tool when it comes to science in general. Alright, alright, I know what you're saying, you're like, just get the kinematics already, I don't care about your nonsense tricks, we got to get to work. But don't worry, I'm going to get to kinematics soon. But first thing first, you gotta learn this trick because it's super useful and it's called dimensional analysis. It's basically analyzing the dimensions of a value. And the reason why it's useful is because it basically lets you keep track of whether your units match up, and it also lets you convert from one type of unit to another unit really fast. So let's just start with an example, right? So let's say that you have like 50 kilometers per hour, right? And you want to convert this to, let's say, meters per second. Because in physics, you generally want to have meters per second. And sometimes problems troll and give you 50 kilometers per hour. So how do we convert this quickly? Well, first off, let's just write this as a ratio so that it's more clear. Kilometers per hour is basically kilometers over hours, right? So basically this is 50 kilometers every hour. Then, if we want to convert to meters per second, let's first convert it to kilometers per second. So, we know that there's 60 minutes in every hour, right? So we could write hour over 60 minutes. And you can see here that hour would cancel out. So, in order to cancel out minute, we have to put minute in the numerator and put something else on the denominator. But we want to eventually get a second, so we put seconds on the denominator. So how many seconds are in minute? 60, that's right. So we put minute in the numerator and 60 seconds in the denominator. Bam, bam, epic. So now we're left with kilometers per second, and we want to convert this to meters per second. So we just had to put kilometers in the denominator and meters in the numerator, and we know that there's 1,000 meters in every kilometer. So we multiply by 1,000 meters over every kilometer. And then once we cancel out units, <gasps> we're left with the meters per second. We have what we wanted in the first place. So this is pretty epic, right? We were able to convert 50 kilometers per hour to 13.9 meters per second using this dimensional analysis. And it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to memorize any like instant conversions. You could use very common conversions in order to do a more complex conversion. But now this is not the only way that dimensional analysis could save you on a physics test. Like, in the FMA, there's a lot of questions that use dimensional analysis. Not only does it let you convert, right, it also lets you make sure that your answers are correct. So let me just give you an example, right? So let's say the problem gives you a ball, right, and it throws it up with speed v. And it asks you to find, in terms of v and gravitational acceleration, what's the height that the ball reaches. And at the very end, you find that it's just v over 2g, let's say. Now this answer is wrong, actually, and like, if you just look at it, it might not seem like that at first. Like, there's no way to tell that this is wrong just by looking at it, right? No, there's actually a way to do it, okay? So, let us just replace each value with its type of unit. So we know that velocity is meters per second, right? So we can say meters per second over, and then the bottom, 2, two is just a constant so it doesn't have a unit, but g is acceleration, so that's meters per second squared. And then h is just meters, right? So now, if we cancel all the units out, so meters cancel with meters, and then one of the seconds cancels out with this second over here, and we're left with seconds on this side. But no, height doesn't have a unit of seconds. This is wrong. So we were able to find that v over 2g is incorrect. So then what is the actual answer? So we know that we have one too many seconds in the denominator, right? So we need to add another second. And we also are missing one meter in the numerator. So if we square a velocity over here, then we have one more meter in the numerator and one more second in the denominator. So let us do dimensional analysis on this. So we get meters over second squared over meters per second squared. Then this is meters squared over second squared over meters over second squared. And then these second squares cancel out and then the meter cancels out with one of the meters in the numerator and we're left with meters, which is the correct unit of height. So we are able to save ourselves from losing a point on the FMA just by checking our answers using a dimensional analysis. It's pretty epic. Another thing that's cool about dimensional analysis is that it helps you remember your formula. Not only does it help you check whether an equation is valid, but it also helps you remember that equation in the first place. It can also help you find the units of a measurement if you don't know what the units are. Like let's say, for example, you're like, huh, what's the unit of torque? I forgot. So you're wondering what the unit of torque is, right? And you're like, hmm, what could it possibly be? That is a question. And then you remember, oh shoot, we have a formula for this. 
So you remember that the formula is t equals f times r, but you probably know both the units for f and r. So then you can say torque is equal to the units of f times the units of r. And we know that force is measured in newtons, so we can replace force with newtons. And then we know that r is measured in meters, so times meters. And with blammo, you know immediately that torque is newtons times meters. Alright, another example of how you could derive a formula using this. So, maybe you're like, hey, okay, I remember that torque is force times radius, but I remember, there was another formula for this. What could it possibly be? And then you remember, it had I in it. Huh. Then what? I remember there's two things, but I only remember I. What was the other thing you multiply it by? So first things first, let's figure out what the units of I is. So I, the moment of inertia, is basically equal to mR squared. So we know that mass is measured in kilograms, and then the radius is measured in meters. So this is the units of our I. Okay. And now we want to multiply this by something in order to get torque, which is newtons times meters. So what 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 is newtons in terms of kilograms and meters, huh? So if you take in the F equals MA content, you probably know what force is equal to. That's right, F equals MA. And then this is just equal to kg times meters per second squared. If we just replace mass with kg and acceleration with meters per second squared. Epic. And then this is also equal to a newton. So we know that a newton is this. So we could say that a torque unit is just kg meters per second squared times m, so we add a square over here. So now what do we have to multiply i by to get kg meters squared over second squared? So we have kg meters squared over here, right? We have kg meters squared, but we have to multiply that to get over second squared. So what thing has a unit of over second squared? That's right, angular acceleration. So since angular acceleration is one over second squared, you could say that torque is equal to i alpha. Holy moly whack moly. We were able to remember a formula just by like looking at like the dimensions. Okay, dimensional analysis is not that cool because it can't tell you constants because constants don't have dimensions generally, but they could help you remember the formula like this. I know that was like a super convoluted example, but I'm just trying to show you the power of dimensional analysis and how it could help you in the FMA situation when you're like pressured for time and you don't remember a formula and you're like, what can I do? What could possibly be the answer? So yeah, it's pretty helpful. You two guys should work on it and Whenever I bring up a new formula, when I'm like explaining a new concept, try to see how it makes sense dimensionally. It's also a really great way to check your answers, so whenever a question asks for velocity, make sure that in your equation, your units are actually velocity, okay? Because I made that mistake once, like on the Usabo, I literally put an answer that was not dimensionally correct. It asked for force, but my units were like meters squared per second squared or some nonsense like that. Alrighty, that's all I got. Dimensional analysis is pretty epic, you guys better learn it, okay? I'm counting on you. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you want more of these kind of videos, let me know down in the comments. And other than that, that's all I got. Thank you guys again for watching, and see you guys next time.